How's it going? Today I want to check out Blade Arcus from Shining. This was an arcade game ported to PS4 a little while ago, but is now also ported to PC. And I want to go through some of what this game offers, because I had barely heard any mention of it and had no idea it was coming to PC. So, on the PS4 version they didn't have an online mode as far as I can tell. But we get that on PC. But we don't have a gallery, which is kind of a bummer because this game has a lot of gorgeous artwork. Anyway, let me go through the options real fast. It's a PC game. As far as display settings go, this is depressing. We have windowed and full screen. That's exciting, right? V-Sync on or off. That's it. That's all you got, guys. Game settings. Default is 3. The game can move back and forth very quickly, so 3 seems about right. I kind of like the 3 out of 5, personally. You know, you can bump up the time if you want. It's not really necessary. The game moves pretty fast. Button settings. I've tested out the keyboard. It seems to work alright. You can rebind pretty much everything. Except escape. I know you can't bind that one for sure. But uh, we got up to two gamepad settings. I suppose one and two player. Uh, this does support direct input right out of the box. However, I, as you'll see here from some of the buttons, when you remap it, it doesn't come up coherently. So A and C, which I have for L1, is listed as back here. B and C, which I have as R1, is start. So it's a little odd looking at it and trying to figure out what's what if you're still trying to figure out what kind of macros you want where and how to remap it when you come back to it it doesn't make any sense uh, I hope they could make some sense of this in the future but it works so that's more than we can hope for I mean heck Street Fighter 5 doesn't even support that so moving on it also works with X input obviously sound settings this game starts off extremely loud so make sure you turn this down this is the minimum I could get and still pretty pretty loud by my standards uh, but it's it's about right on an absolute minimum it's okay moving back to the main menu here we have the manual which is pretty much the only tutorial we're gonna get it covers everything going through the HUD to the controls character selection everything you see here all of this is in the game as far as mechanics and these are not really that hard to understand and while it doesn't seem there like there are a lot of mechanics that doesn't make it bad in fact I think simpler games are better at least in my opinion these days to my personal taste uh, so this this is just right up my alley I think so let's check out some of these things uh, there's also one really cool feature and for the sake of Expedience. I will change something here. As you see here, you have a variety of characters. You get like kind of a diagram or hologram version of what they look like beforehand. You pick two characters. Everybody picks two characters, a main and a support. Everybody can be a main or a support in this game. It also has an awesome ability in between rounds, which I will demonstrate here quickly. So I'm putting it on super easy so I can face roll the opponent for your amusement quickly. Also, the character models are 3D. They look a little bit odd against the background. But... It's not that bad. I think the models look very good. And the, the artwork and the backgrounds, pretty nice looking. Okay, so now, I just won the round. Pretty cool. Whoa, what's this? This allows you to switch between your main and your assist in between any round. Whether you win or lose, you can change the character. And then your, your previous main is now your assist. It's a pretty cool feature. Definitely helps keep uh, 
bad matchups to a minimum. So if people try to counterpick you, you can always have that better matchup in reserve if you want to keep things interesting. Uh, one depressing thing is they still have these arcade win screens. I really wish they would abolish these from home fighting games or at least make them optional. They're just kind of a waste of time, in my opinion. Alright, we're going to move into training mode now. And I will demonstrate some of the mechanics to you live. So you can determine whether or not this game might be interesting to you. Alright, so back to the same screen with the choose characters we like to play or that we know something with, at least. Oh, actually, that's not who I want. I want... Sonya. It's a little easier to demonstrate some things with her. Because she has a multi-hit attack. Anyway, going over basics, you can't really run. You only get like a little bit of a dash. I don't know if that's universal to everybody, but everybody I've played hasn't been able to do any kind of full screen run of any kind. Uh, you only get one jump. You don't get any air dashes unless you're the, the maid. I believe it's only her. I haven't found any other kind of special movement options uh, outside of that character. Uh, you do get a super jump as well, which is really hard to input, actually. There you go. It's very tight on the input. And you can super jump forward and back as well, but like I say, it's very, very, very hard to input it quick enough. So, let me switch around some gauges here. It's a little odd menu set up, but... Alright, there we go. Real quick, I want to cover throws. Throws are done by pressing A and B. And you can throw it forward and back. Nothing weird there. You can't throw if your opponent is in hit stun. Or block stun. See, I couldn't throw there. If you time it right, you can get it in there, but otherwise it'll miss. So, you don't get any kind of pink throws or gold throws or however you want to describe it. Uh, you notice you have three gauges, the AP gauge at the top under the life bar, you have the four blocks near support, and your force gauge goes up to three. Now, real quick, I want to go over the AP gauge. Now, if you have at least 50%, you can do this shield, and that takes half the gauge. You notice it doesn't build up very quickly either, so it's kind of expensive to use it. But what it can do is allow you to. Whoops, wrong button here. If you time it right, which I'm not. Oh, well, I'm bad at this. Uh, if you time it right, you deflect your opponent like that. I'm sorry it took so many attempts, but that's what it does. There's another function to this meter, though, and I will demonstrate that. Now, it can, if you push 6 B and C, you'll do that, and it'll take little to no of the meter. It takes just a little bit to basically run that off. Uh, what this does is it gives you armor of some description 
and allows you to hit your opponent. As far as I can tell, you can't combo with it. So it's just by itself. Maybe after jumping you can do it. But you can hold it and it eats your meter really fast. But it does a really huge damage attack. And it wall slams your opponent. It's crazy strong. It's crazy fast. See, that does about 25% of your opponent's health. And that's fully armored as far as I can tell. I haven't tested it extensively, so there may be holes in it, but it's pretty good, it's pretty fast, it's pretty strong, but it eats your meter up, and like I say, it takes a long time for that to build back up. So the next meter I want to tackle here is the support. Now, if you just hit the D button, you call in your opponent, or, well, your partner, to attack your opponent, and that takes one uh, little brick of meter, and that's in neutral. However, if you are attacking your opponent, <coughs> and you bring in your partner, it takes two bricks of meter and they do a slightly different attack. Now if you're in the middle of a special and you hit your partner, they do something else. I believe that's some kind of heal, I haven't really tested it, but that takes three blocks of meter. Uh, and you can force these things if you really want. If you don't want to do the higher end one, or if you want to force a higher end one, you can by pressing B and D or C and D. So, here I'll just do regular attacks and I can do... Oh, I need the meter for it. I can do the level 3 attack, even though a level 2 would normally come out there. So, there is another thing you can do here, and... Go back to the record settings. If you bring in your partner while you're getting hit, it takes three bricks of that meter. And it's kind of like a burst system. So it's a little bit defensive. It seems to be quite invincible from what I can tell. But your opponent can get or your partner can get knocked down by your opponent, and they're delayed from re-entering. So keep that in mind. Your partner can get knocked down. They're not completely invincible. As far as when they come in and attack your opponent, I believe they are totally invincible. So if you're on the ground or whatever getting hit, or I believe even blocking, let's test that. I need the meter. Come on. Yep, even while blocking, you get the same effect. So that's effectively your burst system as well. There are limitations to the support system, however, if you want to use it on offense, that's fine and dandy, but keep in mind, when you hit your opponent, you do not gain any of that meter. The only way you gain any support meter is to get hit or block your, your opponent's attacks through defending yourself properly. See, doing all this gets you none of that meter back. So, keep that in mind, you can use it for offense or you can save it for defense, but it's costly either way, and the only way to get it back is on defense. So let me go to the last meter now. We have force. Now, this is your standard super meter, but it has other functions as well. If you press 4 AC, you get a backdash. Now, you can do this while in block stun, but I'm almost positive you can't do it in hit stun. No, you can't do it in hit stun. But if you do it in block stun, I, I suppose sometimes it says reversal. Uh, but if you press A and C at neutral or 6 AC, it gives you that charge. Now what that does is that effectively counts as like your rapid cancel. So you can extend combos with it or extend pressure or you can even get out of it. You can command backdash out of it if you think something's gonna go bad or if it's a really unsafe attack you do whatever you want with it it's pretty functional it's versatile so have a little fun with it now other than that you have your standard supers well actually let me go to EX attacks EX attacks they take a little bit of meter but not not half it's a little over a third don't be afraid to use them. They're pretty nice. 
They have different properties, obviously, so test around with it yourself, see what you can find out. Now, as far as supers go, they take a brick of meter. One whole block. So, and you get up to three, and it takes a little bit to build these up. So, be careful on how you spend it, just like everything. Uh, I want to check, or show one more thing with the meter, though. If you press D and summon your partner while you're doing your super, they will also come in and do one of their supers, doing additional damage. Although that takes four bricks of your support meter. That takes the whole chunk. You need the, you need the whole thing to do that. So only use it if you know or think you can kill your opponent, because otherwise it's just a huge waste, and you lose a lot of protection and mix up opportunities with it so be smart with it it's awful flashy though and I believe everybody has two different supers and you notice probably that damage in this game is pretty high Like that there did over 50% of their life. Games go by pretty quick. Counter hits deal slightly more damage. And counter hits, not counter hits, but critical attacks. I, I don't really know what causes them. I think they happen randomly. Uh, but they cause additional damage as well. Uh, keep in mind, there is a little bit of an odd thing here. There is damage variance. And I think this is just going back to RPG roots. You notice the damage numbers that pop up, which is also a cool aesthetic thing. They are different. There's really no reason for it. But it's there, so your combos are going to do within a range of damage. Just keep in mind, it's not always going to be the same. There's just that variance in the game. It's, I think it's built right in. Alright, that pretty much does it for this game, and it's... Mechanics, I believe I covered everything. Yep, pretty much. Alright. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the game. I think it's pretty cool. It's online mode has had some issues. But they patched it, and it's not so bad now. It, it needs a little more work, but it's, it's mostly functional. So if you wanted to check it out, it might be serviceable it's not fantastic at the moment but i've played much worse it's not that bad really it's not like aquapause of bad anyways thanks again for watching and i'll check you later peace